Coming up, I climb the engine. So I have to deploy proper BMW technique. Someone is fired. Fired, that's the word I'm looking for. I tried the latest oil scented perfume. Just spritz a little bit like that. And we try to get this beast back into life. Welcome back to part three of Project Karlsruhe, the episode where we are going to get this third running. And we are going to start with fuel pumps, which are in the trunk. And this is a very nice gift from a very nice subscriber. This is what real professional BMW mechanics wear nowadays. So I'm officially, you know, I don't have to do anything now. This car is gonna scare itself into fixing. Yeah, that's not true. I still have to fix it, so. Let's get to it. So the previous owner told me that his mechanic serviced the fuel system, which was about five years ago. So I'm curious to see what he's done and if he actually changed the fuel pumps and if they are still working. And we also need to remove whatever fuel is in the fuel tank because after five years, that's just nasty stuff at this point. Can this go back? Whoa. Yeah, there you go. The fuel pumps live there. It has a musty smell to it. Just this is the original TRX spare wheel. And there's the access hatch for the fuel pumps. Here. There we are. What's this? Nemo and his Bruder. I'm gonna mark these rubber lines so I know which one goes where. Disconnect the connector. Oh, the fuel is coming out. Well, that just tells you how good of a fuel clamp and hose this is. And I barely touched it. Let's remove the nuts. Now we can jiggle, jiggle, and then pull out the fuel pump. I mean, for crying out loud. Is there a way you would consider coming out? Oh, either I broke something or he decided to come out. This is quite different than the 8 series. You can see nasty fuel at the bottom of the tank and the spaghetti of submersible fuel lines. Oh no, these are not submersible fuel lines. You can see marking over there. It says NBR slash CR and it should be CR CR. NBR CR is for the outside use. So the previous mechanic did not do a good job here. That's why these are like super soft. Hold my breath. Oh. So cover that up. So the fuel pump is out and it's pretty obvious that the previous mechanic was in here. These are not the original fuel pumps to the car. I know that because they're connector type. The old style had clamps and these are Bosch. So these are the current fuel pumps that you can get. And these are actually good quality. And if these two are working, I'm not going to replace them. Where the previous mechanic failed miserably is with these fuel lines. And he used regular fuel lines inside the fuel tank, which is a big no. Depending on where you're located in Germany, this is a submersible fuel line and it says MBR MBR. If you're in US or UK, you might say something else, but in Germany, MBR, MBR means submersible fuel line. And these fuel lines say MBR CR, which means these are regular fuel lines meant to use outside the fuel tank. You can actually see how this hose here is swollen and starting to crack. And luckily for the previous owner, he did not drive this car very much. If he did, and if the fuel tank was full, all of this would melt within a few days, explode, and then the car wouldn't run again. So seeing this done by a professional shop is rather disappointing. But I think we are going to move on to testing these fuel pumps and to see if they're working. There we are. That's plus, that's minus. So we're going to give them 12 Vs and see if they're working. So I'm not going to run them too much. I just want to hear them buzzing. That one is good. 
These fuel pumps can be reused and I am going to do exactly that. I got some new parts. OEM submersible fuel hose, cool line, some Swedish high quality hose clamps, ABBA. I had some time to think and I am going to reuse these fuel pumps because they're high quality OEM Bosch pumps. They've been only used for like 30 kilometers back in 2015 when they were installed. They're still working fine and typically these fuel pumps last a very long time, especially the OEM ones. So I don't want to throw away good working parts. Ah. Will this just slide off? Yep, it will. So now I need to cut this one according to size. By the way, you can hear humming noise in the background. That's my heater. It's quite cold in here. That's the hoses done and now I want to replace these rubber absorbers. They look a bit perished. It is a brand new day and I received rubber spacers or rubber mounts that hold this fuel pump assembly in place. Let's swap them out. It's one. Nice. Good. Silicon spray so it slides easier. Pull out the fuel pumps. Yeah, yeah, that's easier. Two. Finished. Now the new strainer that comes with lovely clamps, Norma. And this is ready to go back in the car. Now we're gonna go and clean the fuel tank. Short interruption of the program to answer one question that I get asked a lot, and that is where do I buy OEM parts for my projects? And the truth is I've been buying them from the same place for over three years now, and that is theparto.de. They are the sponsor of this video. I reached out to them since I've been a long time happy customer of theirs, and now I'm gonna share with you how to get good OEM parts at the best price. The Parto is an online marketplace for car parts where you can search throughout stores in Germany and compare suppliers, brands and get the lowest price. It's currently offered in these languages and English is work in progress but you can do what I do, use Google Chrome then right click and translate to English. You can search by selecting your car and then go through the main categories for this make and model. I search using part numbers, for example I need a control arm for my E46 Touring Plenty of hits, but since I only buy OEM, I can tick premium and that will give me well-known premium brands only. Take Clem Forder and it gives me the best price from this store. I actually use this supplier a lot. You can see prices from other suppliers and estimated date of delivery. If you click on the store name, you can see its basic info and reviews. At the checkout, it will automatically compare and calculate to give you the lowest price if you use different suppliers. I scoured the internet when buying parts and I always end up finding the best prices on the Parto. As I mentioned, I've been buying parts there for a very long time and never had a single issue. If you've been following this channel for a while, then you might have figured that I wouldn't bring you a company or product that I wouldn't trust myself. And I know you'll appreciate the Parto as it'll help you save some money while buying good quality OEM parts for your projects. The link is in the description, so check them out. Now back to the revival. Ninja flip. Let's go scuba diving. What is wrong with you? Here's the sit wrap. I jacked up the car so that whatever fuel is in the fuel tank is leaning here. And I sucked up as much as I could with the little device. And I'm gonna use a clean sponge to kind of dab and collect whatever is on the very bottom. Then I'm gonna use a clean microfiber towel to kind of clean everything, add fuel, and just kind of repeat all of that a few times until it's really clean. <coughs> Damn! This is where the fuel pump is sitting. That's bad. A clean microfiber towel is no longer clean. I'm gonna break out the vacuum cleaner. I got fresh go-go juice. 
And there we go. So just a little bit. A couple of liters in. And it doesn't look too bad. It looks okay. So I'm going to clean it one more time with a sponge and just collect all of this garbage. Vacuum it and that's going to be it. Fresh carbon fiber towel. I put fresh fuel in it, sucked all of that out again. Sponge, microfiber towel, and then final vacuuming. And that looks pretty good now. Even if there is something still on the bottom, that's what the strainer and fuel filter are for. So I'm pretty happy with this. The important thing is that the fuel tank is not rusty. That's the most important thing. That's really clean. There's nothing floating in there. New gasket. Ooh, is there a side to it? All right. So there is a specific way that this gasket goes in because these holes are not evenly spread. So this notch here goes towards the car and then the gasket sits perfect. Time to rekindle the spark between the fuel pump and the fuel tank. And I use the air compressor to blow out the fuel pump, make sure there are no debris on it. Perfect. The pumps are fully seated. I just hope that fuel cylinder unit works, but I'm not gonna bother with that now. So we first need to get this car going and then we can sort out the small things like that. That is it. The next step in this revival is to replace the fuel filters and service the engine. But I want to do that inside because it's raining, it's dark, it's cold outside. And I don't want to do this here when I have a nice lift over there. And I'm going to need a small army of people to push this onto the lift. Last time I pushed the 8 Series onto the lift, I needed four people and it was really difficult. So I'm going to find some people tomorrow and we're going to do that next. Maybe we can give it a world. So that way, yeah. then back. And then, three horsepower. <laughs> All right, full send. <sighs> ah. Ah. Good, it is on. That was easy. Perfect. Time to get this car up in the air for the very first time. I'm kind of nervous to see what I'm going to find, but let's go. I say, let's start from the front. The fog light is broken, but I already knew that. Ah, we have a festival of oil. That looks like power steering pump leak. The oil pan is definitely leaking. Everything is just covered in muck. The belts actually look really good. Engine mounts, they don't look very pretty. That only doing for sure. This one looks new, that control arm. Shocks are not leaking. That sensor new, it looks new. Looks like we have the upper oil pan gasket leak. That is a fun one to fix. Oh, someone already drilled the holes. That's nice. See those holes here? Uh, there. So those are not from the factory. Usually there's a solid piece of metal there and there are two oil pan bolts that you need to get to. And the proper way to do it is to drop the whole transmission. So what everybody does is just drill a hole over there so you can access that one bolt. All of this will need to be cleaned first. Then the car needs to run for a while and see how many oil leaks we have. That's probably coming from, from the pan. We have a rusty exhaust pipe. That's just perfect. But honestly, this is not the exhaust. This is just a shield. But you know what? The floor actually looks good. Have a look at that. Oh no, we have a bit of rust here on the drain plug hole. Yeah, you can feel the floor there. The cap is missing. So that needs to be scrubbed down. That's not too bad. This floor here looks perfect. That all looks excellent. Oh, we have the exhaust. 
hanger that's not in its place. Oh, these ball joints are shot, really shot. Tunnel looks pretty solid. But the floor itself, it looks really good. Nothing on this side. Leak from the diff. The output shaft seal here, likely. Oh, we have new filters from the looks of it. That is bad. That exhaust pipe is properly rusty. Yeah, and we have some rust here as well. Oh, the exhaust system for this car is ridiculously expensive. Oh, looks like someone hit it here. Sway bar link, shot. Oh, that one is even worse. Yep, the rear has the self-leveling. That's why it's sitting so low. So likely when we start it, it's going to go up. And there's the pressure accumulator, hydraulics. That doesn't look to be leaking. So that's nice. The fuel tank is in excellent condition. The rest of the exhaust looks okay-ish. It's not rotted anywhere. It's really long. And there are the Zax shocks. And to be honest, that looks somewhat new, but that shock is leaking. I gotta be honest, fellas. For a German car, I was expecting a lot worse. A lot more rust. But this, this is actually really good news. We'll likely have to replace the exhaust. I'm gonna have to look into that a bit later. But when it comes to the structure of the car, the floor, all of that looks really good. We will have to sort out that. Then I will have to remove plastic side skirt and see what's happening there. These fuel lines, they have a bit of surface corrosion. It doesn't look deep or too bad, so maybe it can be just scrubbed off. My excitement level for this car just went up by a lot. So let's get this engine going. A lot of humans, when they find cars like this that have been sitting for five, 10, 15, whatever number of years, get the urge to just toss in the battery and turn the key. Don't do that. There is a proper way to get this car going and we are going to do just that. I am going to service the ignition system, replace the receiver cap, rotors, remove all of the ignition wires and spark plugs, and then spray fogging oil into each cylinder and turn over the engine by hand. You want to do that because the car hasn't been running for a very long time and it's likely that the cylinder walls are dry, so you just want for the piston rings to have a bit of lubrication when they go up and down for the first time. Then the oil, of course, needs to be fresh, fuel, coolant, power steering, all that good stuff, basically all of the fluids but we are going to remove the belts so it cannot spin the water pump or the power steering pump. And we can just twist the key and see if the engine is gonna run because that's the most important bit now. So let's get this party going. It looks like there's a lot less space to work with than the 8 series, so that's exciting. Oh, it's just welded on. Oh, that looks... Really nasty. Yep. Many will get the urge to spray this with mouth cleaner, but I'm not going to do that because there's a person on German forum that was testing these, exactly this, the MAFs, Bosch OEM for the M70 and cleaning it does absolutely nothing. The good thing is we have converted AC that means it's likely going to work. So let's pop the cover here. Ah. Disconnect the cylinder identification sensor. Good, disconnect the coil. How am I gonna spray fog and roll into each cylinder when I can't even put my hands in here? I think I'm gonna remove the bottle. That looks like quick disconnect. Disconnect quickly, please. Oh no, it's leaking. <sighs> so let's just con continue disconnecting ignition wires. First round of ignition wires. That's our fuel injectors. Supposedly the previous mechanic had the intake manifolds off. Another disgusting filter. What the hell happened here? That's not good. There's just no space to put my hands here. Normally I can get my hand underneath here, but the hood is in the way. Oh, 
completely disconnected, number one. Not connected to the spark plug. These are coming out way too easy. Ah, you need to be made of rubber to get to this one. There we are. Okay, I just had a breakfast of amateurs and we can proceed. I'm going to remove the distributor caps and then the fan clutch so I can get to the crank bolt so I can turn over the engine by hand when the time comes. All right, these contacts do not look good. And this is the original cap, 1988. So good thing we're replacing this because this looks really bad. And you can see 88. Oh, this one is broken. 87, even older. This rotor is bad, really bad. This right here is one of the reasons why this car would run so bad. Anyway, let's take off the fan clutch. That was way, way too easy. Yeah, that is an old fan clutch. We gotta replace that as well. So before I start pulling the plugs out, I'm gonna use air compressor to blow any garbage that's inside spark plug holes. And the final overkill, vacuum cleaner. I knew that was gonna happen, and I still went with it. Just soldier on. Spark plug one coming out. What do we have here? We have incorrect spark plugs for this car. NGK ZFR5F. These are the five kilo ohm spark plugs, and you need one. And that is another reason why the car will run poor. And that is bank one spark plugs removed. And this was the easy side, and it was easy. So let's do the difficult side now. This gaping hole here is where the spark plug number 12 lives. And that, that's not number, that's still in there, bastard. And that is the, Famous spark plug number 12. Overall, that went quick, but removing them is the easy part. The difficult part is spraying fogging oil and torquing them down, the new spark plugs. Time for fogging oil for man. Latest collection. Just spritz a little bit like that, and the females will come running. <coughs> Don't do that, they won't come. But all joking aside, this stuff is great. I put it in my engines, coffee, cereal. It really gives it zest. The cylinder number one should be easy. So verify that that's in. Yes, it is. Spray a little bit. Like that, that's enough. Bank one is fogged. So when I was doing this on the eight series, I was able to fog all 12 cylinders. But here I'm just not sure, to be honest. There's no space to put this bottle in. I guess that's the ticket. Yes, it's in. I understand why people don't want to do this, because it's just painfully difficult. Number 11 done. And now the biggest bastard, 12. That's the hole. Oh yes, it is in. Now if I could only press the... Number 12 fogged as well. Oh, that was ridiculously difficult, but it's done. I think now we're gonna move on to replacing distributor cap and rotors, and then give this a little bit of time, and then we can turn over the engine by hand. Get it in firmly, and then smack. So the previous owner told me that the car was running rough and have a look at that. That is the original rotor and it is shot. And then the distributor caps are also just gone. All of the contact points look really rough. Here are the new parts, Bosch OEM. Clean up the surface. New ones go in and they only go in one way. So you can't make a mistake. 
torque for this is like five, six newton meters, so very light. Time to turn over the engine. 27 on the crank pulley. Now let's start spinning. So far, smooth as butter. That is excellent. There is no weird resistance. Spark plugs are out, so there should be no compression. And it is turning over nice and smooth. All right, that's enough. Time to reinstall the spark plugs. These are currently the only correct spark plugs for the M70 engine. You want to use exactly this part number for NGK plugs. The reason being, these are one kilo ohm, and these here that in parts catalog fit on this engine are five. And that doesn't work with the ignition system on this car. The old, old Bosch plugs that were originally designed for this engine were one kilo ohm. So Bosch plugs that are in the catalog today for this engine also don't fit because they are five kilo ohms. So always get these ones. Otherwise you're gonna have a rough running engine and you're gonna be chasing problems and you're not gonna know what it is. Spark plug number one goes in. And that was the last one. Yes! I am actually surprised I was able to torque all of them, especially this one. Come on, let go of, let go of my torque wrench. I need it back. Come on. Success. Oh, my hands are absolutely beaten. And this is the combination of sockets and stuff that I had to use to get to all of the spark plugs. So now we're gonna move on to the ignition wires. I have brand new wires that I'm going to install later, but just to get the car going, we are going to reuse the old one. But first I'm going to test all of them. We are looking for physical damage. And also I'm gonna use a multimeter and check resistance on all the wires. The wires that doesn't show resistance, we know it's bad. They should be around six kilo ohms and the one for the ignition coil is two. Number one is bad. Number two is fine. Six is the most important one because that's the one that contains the cylinder identification sensor. And that one is good. So we only have one dead wire, which is cylinder number one. I have boxes with old wires. So I'm just gonna find one that says number one. And if it's good, use it. See how that is reading 6.2. That is a good wire. I double checked them again, and this is ready for bank one. On bank two, we have number three, four, and five kaput. That's junk. Like I said, we are going to replace these cables a bit later. The whole point now is to get the car going again. Is there the ignition coil? Nice solid click. <laughs> there is just no room to do this. So I can't reach far enough to plug in number five or 11. So I have to deploy proper BMW technique. Click, damn it. I mean, master cylinder, brake reservoir, power steering reservoir, everything is in the way. Oh, and there it is. F it. Let. That's in now. Let's just. But that's the ignition system ready to shoot fire. And my hands, I need some sort of therapy. Oh, just look at that. It's all red and swollen. By the way, I should mention, if you're doing that monkey stunt where you're standing over there, never lean your hand onto the intake manifolds because the gasket can then break or break the seal and then you're going to have a vacuum mix. For me, all of that is going to come out. So even if I put my hand over there, it doesn't matter. But just don't do it if you are replacing spark plugs and not planning to take out the intake manifolds. Now we are going to connect fuel hose there, uh, run the fuel pumps manually and remove whatever old fuel is in those lines. You watch, I'm gonna go fire off the fuel pumps. Is there anything coming out there? 
Yes. If that looks like insufficient fuel pressure to you, you're about to find out why that is. Uh, the important thing is, there is no sludge or like small particles of crap. So that's good. Just to make sure that these fuel pumps are actually good, I'm gonna test the fuel pressure because I don't know if that's good. These are the fuel filters. I'm going to replace both of them, of course. You can see the date 2014. That's when the previous mechanic replaced them. And I also want to replace these rubber lines, two feed lines, return line. And there's two small rubber hoses here as well. And I'm gonna start by disconnecting these one by one and let the fuel drain. And then I'm gonna go on top and again, disconnect them one by one so I don't get them mixed up because it's really important to keep the order. Put that one back. So now we can go on top and disconnect them one by one and replace them. Okay. So now I can go on the bottom of the car and pull this line out. Let's see which one is the winner. I think it's this one. No, this would be it. So that's the lower filter hose. So now we're gonna go up and feed the new line down that tiny passage. So I taped the end off so that the dirt can enter the hose. And let's see how this goes. I have a better idea for the next one. And there we are. So I'm going to mark this hose as a lower fuel filter. So what I'm going to do is tape the new hose to the old hose and pull it through like that. It should be easier. So let's see how that works. Ah, look at that. Using the brain. Really good. That was the return line. So we're gonna mark it as such. This is the fuel hose that I'm using. It's OEM Coolan. Coolan makes fuel hose for BMW. You can search part numbers and then buy fuel hose already cut to shape for this car from BMW, but that's gonna get really expensive. So instead, just do this. I bought this whole roll for 55 euro and it's 20 meters, so it's enough to cover this car 10 times. And I also grabbed OEM hose clamps. ABBA clamps that I got are too big for this one. This is 13.5 on the outside and seven and a half inside, ready to six bar. And this is the markings for the hose that goes outside the car. So that is a really good tip when you're restoring a car like this. I'm gonna try and leave the link in the description for this one. Good. Okay, I just realized something. I think he put this filter the wrong way. Check the upper one. He put the fuel filters in the wrong direction. There's a f***ing arrow on it. How do you mistake that? So there's an arrow on the fuel filter that dictates the flow of the fuel. And as you can see, it's very clear. Fuel comes in here, goes out there. And he installed them like this on the car, which means fuel was coming in here and coming out over there. And then you wonder why the car runs so poorly. I mean, I've seen some shady stuff, but that's just plain stupid. You know what? I'm really mad about this because this is just unacceptable. And the guy told me he paid him like 5,000 euros for a bunch of work to do the fuel system and he did nothing. He didn't even replace the fuel lines and then installed fuel filters incorrectly. It's just fired. That's the word I'm looking for, fired. So now with the fuel filters removed, I'm gonna replace this return line and these two small lines here. <laughs> here are the two short fuel lines and you can see they were just absolutely destroyed. So how do you charge someone so much money to redo the fuel system and then you leave original 30 years old fuel hoses? Damn, this lamp takes a really good beating and it still works fine. New fuel filters. Pay attention to the direction. Fuel comes out here, goes in here. 
Good, that's ready for the car. And that's those two short fuel hoses installed. Fuel filter is done. We are going to replace every single fuel rubber line on this car. And from here, it's all metal, hard line, all the way up to the wheel well here. And then from here, somewhere in there, to the top of the engine, there are two rubber lines that we need to replace. And I can bet you any money that's going to leak if I don't replace it now. It's not that difficult to replace. I have to remove this plastic cover here, and then I need to unbolt the hard line here and just kind of lower it down and then pull out. I wonder, do we have play in this wheel? That seems okay. Huh, that seems okay as well. Nice, we don't have suspension issues on this side. I'm just gonna quickly check the other side. Nice. Looks like we don't have suspension issues in the front. Oh, well, that was easy. The disc and pads, they gotta go. Brake line also looks good. That's probably replaced, but for the peace of mind, we're gonna replace it again. So the dust boot turned into dust. You see some remnants inside, so likely we're gonna have to do something about that. That's not fun, but this is the access hole here. I'm gonna remove this plastic cover, and then we should be able to see those lines. By the way, I just realized we were missing a fender liner here. Look how much mud <laughs> we have in there. But it looks good, there's no rust, but we are definitely missing a fender liner in here. The other side has it. And there we are. So these two hard lines, that's the few lines. These are brake lines, but we're not gonna touch those. So the line is loose on top, and then I unbolted this hard line here along the bottom of the car, so I have enough room to lower it a bit down. And that is it. You can see that it's already leaking. So if I started a car like this, it would just, there would be fuel everywhere. So good call on replacing this. And that's one. So you just replace this bit. I'm gonna put a piece of tape so I know which one is which. Easy. There we are. Come on. Gonna put a piece of tape on the tip so nothing gets in. Push it back in. That one is nice and in. Alright, first I'm gonna secure all of the screws here. And we are done here. And then one day we'll come and clean all this up. But now we need to get this car running. Now we're going to remove the belt so you cannot spin the water pump or the power steering pump, then change the oil and we're ready to light it on fire. I'm gonna remove the fan shroud first because that needs to come out anyway to replace the radiator. Very easy. Man, this radiator is bad, really bad. And it looks like it was patched at one point. Compress the tensioner. I said compress. Ah, there we go. And the belt is coming out. I'm just gonna cut this one off. Okay, so let's spin some stuff. AC compressor. The bearing is shot, but it's not locked up. Pulley. That's shot. Water pump. It's no play. Just a very minimum one, which is normal, but it's spinning nicely as well. This pulley. Shot, of course. Alternator. That feels fine. Bar string pump. That feels normal as well. No play. That's pretty good overall. On to the oil change. O-ring, oil filter. The 
You'll inspect that for Legos a bit later. So far, that oil looks really clean. Back the cover. I mean, that oil is really clean. Nice brown color. All right, it's been dripping like that for 20 minutes now, and I'm done waiting. So in here it's really clean, no sludge, nice and clean oil. New filter, fresh oil, that's full. That's good for now. It's mission fluid, I checked that a while back and it was fine and it's actually not that dirty, it looks clean. So it's showing or filled, but that's fine because you check the level of the transmission once the car is warm. So that's fine. Your air filter. I cannot open the doors. There's just no room in this garage. Yep, that comes out. That's easier. Now where do I put it? One of these days I'm gonna have a big garage and I'm still not gonna have enough space. Super maintenance free rocket. That is the name of this very dead battery. The negative cable is red and the positive is black. Makes total sense. Rocket. Damn, that thing is big. Have a look at the place where the battery resides. Looks really good, no rust. This here is just whatever surface rust, I can scrub that up and a tiny bit there, but this is solid metal. Thank goodness. This car is really solid. Just don't be towing with me, bro. that'll work. We want good contact. Alrighty, the pre-flight check is done. All that we need to do now is turn the key and see what happens. Here we go. Do we have electricity? We do. Clock is on, bunch of warning lights. Oh, there's a small cubby here. Old school German engineering, don't let me down. Give it a rest. Sounds good. But no start. Negative on that. All right, it's time again to consult the repair manual and panic. Did I forget to connect something? Troubleshooting time. I need to check for spark and fuel supply. Oh, 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 oh. I didn't connect the fuel pump. <sighs> yep. Yeah, so that happened. Doesn't matter, I can edit all of that out and make it seem like I'm, I know what I'm doing. And I don't forget stuff. Surely now, That didn't sound good. There you go. Come on, girl. It's running. You frivolous bastard. You're alive. Yes. It actually sounds decent. Shaking a little bit, but it didn't run forever, so that's fine. We can't have it run for long because there's no cooling system, obviously, but just a little bit. <laughs> She's a runner. Tiny revs. It's brand new. It sounds really decent. 
bit of condensation from the back, but that's totally normal. Brake pressure. And the belt is off, so obviously the alternator light is on. I think we have a problem with the fuel gauge. Sender unit. I'm really, really happy with this. All right, let's turn it off. The magnificent turd is alive. What I want to do now is start it again and check if the transmission is working. Can't believe I forgot to connect the fuel pump. Let's see how it starts now. Flick of the button. All right, reverse. <laughs> it's moving. The brakes are not very good, but that's because the power steering pump is disconnected. Neutral. Drive. Yep. Running and driving vehicle. It's brand new. I mean, the engine sounds really healthy. There's no crazy racket, metal sound or nothing. It just sounds like a V12 should, or the M70. I was going over the footage earlier and the game of how many mistakes can one mechanic make continues. This is the bank one fuel rail, bank two fuel rail and their pressure regulators. And he connected the vacuum lines from bank one to bank two and from bank two to bank one. These should be connected in reverse order. So I need to fix that as well. It's not that difficult, but it's just really annoying. This is really good. There's basically no rust on the car. The engine sounds healthy and that makes me very happy. We're going to end part three here. And then in the next episode, we're going to get this car driving, which means I have to sort out the cooling system, radiator expansion tank, coolant hoses, flush the coolant, flush the power steering fluid, and then I can reconnect the belts and we can go for a small test drive. We cannot take it on the road because this car is not registered and there's no tooth inspection. And there's still plenty to be done. I mean, just now I had it running again off the camera and I gave it a bit of throttle and I could feel and hear the misfire. And something tells me it has to do with fuel supply. So I'm gonna have to check fuel pressure again. The intake manifolds need to come out, check the banjo bolts, replace the valve cover gaskets and injectors for cleaning. Oil leaks, we are going to sort that out as we go. Clean as well. Front suspension seems mostly okay. We'll see how much work I'm gonna have there. Brakes, I'm gonna have to do all four corners. Rear shocks are leaking, so I'm gonna have to send that for refurbishment. And the exhaust is what we in show business called <laughs> I'm gonna have to do some research and see what to do there because new exhaust is very expensive. But overall, this is a solid, solid car. As always, thank you so much for watching and please consider subscribing, it does help a lot. And check out the links in the description for my merchandise and Patreon account should you want to support projects like this. I'm going to see you next time and now I'm going to go home and have a well-deserved beer. Good vehicle.